we've been out here for, let's see, it is five o'clock, almost Nevada time. I think we got out here about 10 o'clock this morning. Yep. And we've been doing the same claim site all day. This place is incredible. I mean, there is a attic that has, what would you say, five winds in it? So I think that's gonna be the main workings. Okay. Um, because that's got the big head frame over it as well that leads into those adits. So basically this is gonna be a, an accumulation of about four claims. Um, so it's gonna be an 80 acre claim site. Yeah. And you have, this is, shoot, probably 20 different line entrances on it that you can work with you and play. 16, 17 adits. And they're not all like boom, boom, boom. They all go into the same workings. They're like, you go to the next valley over and there's adits on each side. Yep. And you go to the next valley over and there's more adits and shafts. It's just massive. I mean, it's yep. it's definitely going to be a commercial worker. Yeah, there's got to be millions and millions and millions of dollars in there. Hi, I'm Jessica with Gold Rush Expeditions. And today we are at what may soon be my favorite claim site. We see a lot of places and I am absolutely blown away by this site. So we're gonna start with the mill site and I'm gonna show you around. So let's go take a look over here. Coming out here, even if you had no idea what this was mined for, there are so many little pieces of history left that tell you exactly what they were mining here. And I can tell you it was gold, gold and gold. This is a gold screen. Miners would use this to separate the bigger rocks from the smaller rocks. And then that's just a way to refine the bigger rocks to make it easier to possibly put on like a gold shaker, which would then shake the gold out of the other small rocks. Speaking of gold shakers, I have one right here. So now that you've separated the big rocks from the smaller rocks, the miners would take those smaller rocks and they'd put them on something like this. This is a gold shaker table. Now this moves and shakes and shakes. Of course, it's too big and heavy for me to do. It would have been had, it would have been driven by a machine and you would have had a mat over the top of this. Now, when it's shaking, gold is heavy. So it's going to sink down into the riffles that were on the mat here. The smaller rocks that aren't heavy are gonna just kind of bounce off and then the miners don't have to worry about them. Then the miners can take all the gold that's in the little riffles and move on to the next process in the milling. Now that you've separated your gold and you've got all these pieces, what are you gonna do with it? Well, the next process is to actually melt that metal down to make them into bars. That could have been done in something like an oven. This very well could have been the actual oven that they were using to smelt them down. Now, when they were being smelted at a place like this, they could get the bars to about 80% gold, but it's really difficult to extract the extra copper and silver and those kinds of things. So those would have been called door bars. Door bars are not gonna be your 99.9% .9 pure silver or, you know, pure gold. They didn't have the ability to do that out here in such a remote area. But I can tell you this much, here at this claim site, they were smelting them down pretty well. And I can show you why, because there's a slag pile. Let's go check that out. Now look at all this asphalt. Like, why would somebody bring all this asphalt into the middle of the desert? Well, it's not asphalt at all. It kind of looks like it because it's nice and dark and black, but really this is your junk metals. This is the stuff that the miners were smelting off. They were taking out the gold, the silver, the copper. They were putting those in the door bars. And what do they do with the rest of it? They just pour it. So basically that's all this is. This is the junk metal that nobody wanted. You can actually see from where it was hot and then cooled, it looks a lot like lava wood when it gets hot and then cools because that's exactly what this is. It's metal that was heated up, separated from the good metal that they wanted to keep. And then the garbage was dumped right here in this giant asphalt, just kidding, slag pile. Is this slag completely worthless? Oh, don't toss it out too soon. Cause let's be honest, the process of processing gold has changed dramatically over the years. And when the miners were out here, they were getting the creme de la creme of the metals. And that's what went into the door bars and then shipped out for final processing. But I bet if you process some of this slag, you would still be able to find gold. Now, this might be one of my absolute favorite things at this mill site, even though I can't tell you exactly what this building was used for. I know that it was used in the smelting process because it's right off of the smelt pile it looks like this was a bunch of ore that may have been going into the process. 
but then you've got this incredible brick structure. So you've got these nice little windows that probably had doors on them inside at one point in time, and then you could put big old wood blocks here so that nobody could get in or out. Another thing, look at all this structure. This thing was done with extreme craftsmanship. Now I wanna show you the coolest thing. Let's go inside this. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen at a mill site. Look at the construction. You've got this nice big rock that's most likely local to the area that's been concreted on these walls right next to brick concrete. And then you've got this giant like concreted archway above me. Now I want you to just ponder for a minute. It's the 1900s, okay? There's not a lot of bobcats and machinery that's gonna make this wall for you. So what did you have? You had most likely a mason who was here. He was finding a rock. Carry this rock put it over here. They may have had a mule or something to help them. Concrete it in. Find another rock. Put it in. Concrete it in. This had to have taken a long time. And look at the size of this thing. It's probably 25 feet tall and 100 feet long. Like, it's incredible. It would have taken a lot of time and precision to make something like this. When we first drove up to this site, we saw this big concrete thing that we thought was probably a oven of some kind. Well, that oven comes down about 20 feet, and then it is into this long hallway type tunnel. Not quite sure what to call it. In here, I'm saying that they had some sort of fire for a couple of reasons. All of the brickwork on top is a little bit singed, like fire's been in here. And then it also has these little air ports to the surface that can open and close. So if you're smelting things off and you need a little bit more heat, kind of like a bellows, you could use these to kind of work as a bellows in here. I have seen a lot of mill site remains. I mean, I do this five days a week, all year long, and I have never seen anything as incredible as this. First of all, the structural integrity is insane. Our vehicle is parked right above us, and I had no idea this was here until I came down and started exploring further. So the structural integrity, absolutely amazing. And I hate to say it, but there's hardly any of this left out there. It's just being destroyed by the second. There's no help in preserving them. And mostly all we get to see is the foundations where the mill was or the foundations where the winches were. This is absolutely incredible and a once in a lifetime opportunity, I think. I just wanna show you reference. I'm five foot seven and a half. That gives you an idea of the actual size of these walls. Another vital component to a mining operation is going to be your assayer or your assay office. This is going to be an independent person who's completely unbiased about the mine whatsoever. You set them up, give them a place to work, and then they come in and they take smaller samples of ore, they smelt them down, and then they can tell you exactly how much gold in ounces per ton there is in your mine. And that's exactly what we're standing in here right now. How do I know this was an assay office? Well, again, looking at the history that the miners left. I have pieces of crucibles. Crucibles were used to boil the metal, which was then poured into cuples. And this is how your assayer between this process would figure out exactly how many ounces of gold per ton you had in your mine. Again, tiny little pieces of slag. So it's not the big, massive pieces we saw down lower on the mill, but these tiny little ones because they were working with tiny little instruments at the time. Again, this is gonna be your slag. This is gonna be the metal that they were burning off, and you can see that it's just kind of in a layer on the top of this piece of rock here. The reason this is um, on here is this was actually part of the oven. You can see it was part of what was a bigger oven previously, in fact, We've seen a couple of these around that have some small remains of writings on them. One we saw down below said fire clay. Um, this one just has a CO for company, but there's also a Y, so it could have been something fire clay company. I did find one that said Denver. There could have been a Denver fire clay company. And again, more slag on what would have been part of the assayer's oven. And this one just has a B on it. Let's go. Check out this um, thing that I don't know what it is. So what I do know about this is they locked it down really good and tight. It has a nice hook here and some nice steel hinges over here. It's got some shelves in it and then this piping which actually comes out the side. Now this could have been used for a few things 
my first thought would be, well, duh, it's the safe, you know? Lock away your golden stuff, but then what's the point of the piping? Another theory is that it could have been where they stored the dynamite. Dynamite is very sensitive to temperature. So if you were storing it in here, you could actually keep it a safe temperature. One last theory, this may have been some sort of cooling system where the assayer was cooling the metals in here to make them workable or getting them to a certain temperature. Just another theory. So you usually have two types of mills. You've got the mill that is for the area and all of the local mines bring their ore to the mill to be processed. And then you've got the massive mines that have their own individual mill. Well, that's what we've got here today, folks. We've got a massive mine that brought all the gold to support this one massive mill. So now it's time to go see these awesome gold producing mines. The Illinois mine is one of the largest and most valuable sites in Nevada with documented gold and silver ore reserves of over 50,000 tons with a value of over $38 million. Despite the success of the mine, the Illinois has a bit of grim history. The mine was discovered in 1875 by Alfred Welsh, who at the time was very poor and could only afford to complete the bare minimum assessments on the mine. After selling the mine and buying it back, by 1889, the Illinois was producing hundreds of thousands of dollars of ore. At this time, Welsh decided to pay off his family's mortgages, excluding one brother who had no mortgage. This brother insisted that Welsh pay him an equal amount as the rest of his family. But instead, Welsh brought his brother back to the mine. One day in 1891, Welsh's brother shot Welsh and fled the scene, and the Illinois mine was forced to close. The Illinois was reopened later and worked on and off since then. Today, the mines on the Illinois property are in surprisingly good condition. Most of the workings are interconnected, and the drifts and shafts in the main workings are timbered. The Illinois mine workings are cut into stable and competent rock. There is mapping from 1930 and 1973 available with geological estimations. The drifts have been run with water and air lines, probably circa 1970. Additionally, there has been electrical lines run into the top two levels with lighting and new wood supports. Surveyors estimate that there are over 10,000 feet of workings on at least five levels. The Illinois mine should be viewed as a commercial operation. A plan of operations and bonds would be required to bring this mine to active status again. But with $38 million in reserves, it would be well worth it to get the Illinois mine up and running again. All right, so we're into the big mine. This is the center of operations. What you have here, your big shaft. Look at that. That car would slide right up that. That's cool. We had our winch over here that was pulling ore up and down. It went in, as we can see, because there is rub marks on the timbers inside from where the cable was. What is this? It's an ore chute and an ore chute. Why would they have two ore chutes? This little piece, your ore car comes up and you just got muck. You know what muck is? It's just a bunch of shit you don't care about. Just garbage rock. So your muck comes up, you dump it in your ore car. Your ore car, where there was timbers out here, goes da 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 and dumps off the side because that's all your waste pile. You don't care about that. Up here, you've got this one. When you have your good ore, the car goes all the way up and it dumps down here and it goes into this nice little house here. Why would it go into this nice little house? If you've ever read anything about mining, you'll read that smaller mines, when they were just getting started, did hand sorted ore. That means some guy was out there and he picked up every piece of rock and said, gold, shit. Gold, shit. And that was pretty much what they did. That's hand sorting ore. That would have happened right there and it would have happened in small batches. 
and then he would have come out, probably would have had another little car that scooted right out here, and that would have gone down, and they would have done their little smelter thing to it. Okay, what do we have here? Another boiler. I know I've been chatting about these in the recent history, and you guys are all probably like, man, those dumb old miners, they had to use boilers for shit. They didn't have like generators and cool stuff. Well, what if you had a generator that could actually act as a compressor at the same time? That's what your boiler did. So it gave you power from your steam, and you also could use that steam off another valve as a compressor. So you could push down air, you could push steam down, you could do various things. So it's actually a lot smarter than what we use today. The problem is, is that every once in a while, if these aren't maintained, they explode. So what I'm looking at here is, this looks like the ore body that they were following to get the gold out of. And there's a bunch of little pick marks in here that, you know, a miner was using a little pick to get the rock out from this little vein right here. So even though there is some ore here, this was not a working tunnel. This was actually a haulage tunnel. And I can tell that because it's incredibly narrow and pretty short, just wide enough to put a ore car with ore in it and then take it outside of the mine. There's multiple shafts above and below us, which are all which all probably came into this tunnel and then was shipped out and then taken to the mill down below. There's gold right in here. It's visible. Oh. See that? Yep. Okay, so there's their gold. You can see it right there and see the material that it's in. That clay-like. It's really soft clay. We've had this discussion before and told you that this is where you're gonna get good ore out of. Well, there you go. This is gold. So. When you come up here and you're working, see that? Oh, look at that, that's super pretty. That's gold, that's what you wanna take out. This drift goes back quite a ways. And this may have been a drift that they were working because it's not as clean cut as the haulage tunnel is. It's a little bit more craggly, a little more supported. So most likely they were following the ore body here and then hauling it out through the mess of the College tunnel here. Well, I can tell you this much, the type of rock has completely changed from back there. However, there is some ground ordinate type rock here that has some nice, um, almost Galena look to it. So you can tell the age of this mine simply by the track that's in here. Most of the times you'll see a solid iron track that's inside. This is not a solid iron track. It's actually built on wood, kind of like two by fours. And then just a thin steel strip was placed on the top of it and then bolted down. And that's what the ore cars would have run on. For the entire history that we researched on this mine, go to our website www.goldrushexpeditions.com. For Gold Rush, I'm Jessica, and we'll see you at the next site.